What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Brewers Franchise. We are in August of 2025, and we are in the wild card hunt, but we've lost the first two games of our series against the Giants. 6-1 in both games. We're going to go ahead and hop into some gameplay. We are going to knock out the rest of the regular season of this video, so strap in. We had a tight playoff hunt going. Right here, we're up to nothing here. Bottom of the seventh one out. But Jackson Churio, who's really coming along lately, is 0 for 2 and has a chance to extend his 10-game hitting streak. We're going to hop in and try and get it done. Oh, man, that submarine pitching from uh, Tyler Rogers really gets me every time. That was a pretty ugly swing that I probably won't show. Ooh, that was a better swing. Still no contact, though, and now it's 0-2. Ooh, we're a little behind on that, and it is going to be a pop-out foul. E, you don't really ever expect that high fastball, even though it's only 85. He sets you up with that slow 70-something mile an hour slider, and then he comes down low with the high fastball. Well, we get the win. Unfortunately, Jackson Churio's hitting streak is going to end at 10, but it is a 2-0 victory for the Brewers to get things started here. All right, game one of a three-game set against the Dodgers here. Actually, six games against the Dodgers this month. We're up one nothing here in the top of the third. Two outs, but the bases are loaded. Aaron Ashby on the bump against James Altman. All right, quick 0-2 count here to Altman. We set him up with a sinker and then a slider. Let's see if we can get him with this circle change down and in. Yes, that'll do it. We strike out Altman, and we are out of this. Aaron Ashby is hyped. And we maintain our 1-0 lead headed to the middle of the third. Wow, wow, wow. A lot has happened since we were last in this game, including a two-run home run by Nelson Velazquez. Uh, now the bases are loaded again with two outs. We're up 6-3 this time. So a little bit more cushion. But Rysel Iglesias has come into the game. One of our new relievers from the trade we made sending Devin Williams to the Braves and he's gonna try and get us out of this up against mookie betts probably you know a top three pure hitter in the league oh two two count here to mookie betts this is a big pitch right here if we can get mookie oh oh man come on there it is we freeze him up on the inside and we're out of this the second bases loaded jam that we are able to get out of. Rysel Iglesias, he's getting old, but he's still got it. Nelson Velazquez added on another home run, a grand slam, and we end up taking this one without having to do much else. Two for five with two home runs and six RBIs for Velazquez and a 10-5 victory over the Dodgers. That's huge. All right, interesting moment here. It's a good thing we won that game against the Dodgers because we lost our next two and ended up losing the series. But now, first game against the Rockies, we're up 13-1, so really no uh, drama there, except Luis Arias is up. He's three for four with a single, a triple, and a home run. So he's only a double away from the cycle. Let's see if we can get it done. All right, able to work it back to a full count, but I'll tell you what, one thing we really don't want here is a walk. We want this double. Let's find a pitch to hit and drive it into the gap. He froze me. Completely froze me. Wow. Disappointing. Disappointing there. We do end up picking up the win, though. Three for four for Joey Ortiz. Love to see that. Another home run for Nelson Velasquez. Really picking up his pace there. A 13-3 to win. All right, game two of our second series this month against the Dodgers. We won our first game, actually. So we're 2-2 two two against the Dodgers this month. And the game is tied 2-2 with two outs. Top six here, Akil Badu at the plate against Shohei Otani. That one's going to be grounded up the middle by Badu, but a nice splitter there by Otani forces the ground out, and the Dodgers are out of this one. It's still tied 2 2. Brady Freeman coming up. All right, top eight here. We are down 3 2 now after Shohei Otani helped himself and drove in a run. William Contreras at the plate, Brewster Greater all in. He's pretty nasty. We got to try and get some offense going. That one's hit pretty well. 
just late and we're not going to be able to get enough air under it from Contreras. That is out number one in the eighth. Andy Pages, MLB The Show legend, makes the play. Christian Yelich now up to the plate. Wow. We thought he was hitting us with the high heat. He got me with that inside slider, bro. No excuses there. Just, hmm. Good pitch. Oh, man. We took a good cut at that one. A fastball up in the zone with Velasquez. I don't know. I don't know how he popped that one up. That's really unfortunate. All right, no more damage done in the bottom of the eighth. We're hopping in it here with Evan Phillips in to close it out. Alex Bregman at the plate here in the ninth. It's our last chance to get something going. That one's going to be grounded up the middle. And Alex Bregman has got us led off with a single. Let's see if we got a pinch runner we can throw in here. Does that make any sense at all here? Yes, Ahmed Rosario, who we picked up from the Braves in that trade where we sent Devin Williams over. Hey, this is one of the reasons we wanted him because he is a good base runner for us. Ooh, bad swing. That ball's down in the dirt and we are stealing. So now the pressure a little bit off of Freilich. We got a runner in scoring position. He can't hit into a double play now, unless I do something stupid. That ball's gonna be grounded to second base, and that's exactly why we sent Rosario. That would have been a double play ball, but now we have a runner on third with one out. Oh my gosh! That was such a good pitch to hit that cutter up in the zone. Our team can't hit it. And now we're down to our final out here. It's gonna be Jake Bowers, who's had a decent season. Really turning into a nice, reliable DH, honestly. That ball is hit hard by Bowers. Get over his head. That's gonna land and we're gonna score the run. And Jake Bowers strolls into second with an RBI single with two outs here in the ninth inning. And this ball game is tied at three. Take another look here. The pitch on the outside of the zone. He just goes with it to the opposite field. It gets over the head of the left fielder cleanly. And an easy score there. Now Joey Ortiz up at the plate looking to give us the lead. That ball is hit decently by Ortiz. Too high though, too high. He put a good swing on it, but Pages will settle underneath. And that is out number three. But we tied this ball game. And the six, seven, eight hitters are coming up for the Dodgers. Hopefully we can force extra innings. Woo, okay. Bottom nine, two outs here. Carlos Hernandez is in for some reason. I don't know why he's in as opposed to Abner Uribe or even like Rizal Iglesias. It makes me think that maybe Uribe got hurt, which would really suck. But two outs, runner on third is Andy Pages, Austin Beck at the plate. So I went to the bullpen and Abner Uribe is available, full energy. I uh, don't know, he's our highest rated reliever now. I don't know why Carlos Hernandez is in, but if we lose this game, Dino Evil, our manager, is gonna have something to answer for. I'll tell you what, we're, we're behind 2-1 here and Austin Beck is not the caliber of play. Oh! Well, I was going to say we wanted to pitch at Austin Beck so we didn't walk him and bring up Mookie Betts. But he knocks it in, and I don't know why our closer wasn't in the game. And something unfortunate has happened, even more unfortunate than taking that big fat L to the Dodgers. Brock Wilkin, our top third base prospect, and I think like our number 10 prospect in our organization, uh, has torn his Achilles. He's going to be out for over six months. That's really unfortunate. Uh, the Dodgers have really done a number on us this month. We went two and four against the Dodgers. And unfortunately, that has brought us two games back in the wild card race. Fortunately, we've got the A's coming up. All right, game one here against Oakland. We are tied at zero. It's the bottom of the second, one out, but we got the bases loaded against Michael Ciccone. I think this has got to be somebody that they drafted or maybe an auto-generated minors guy. 
but you know the A's. Their their roster is depleted as any roster in the history of baseball. So um, it'll be interesting to see what this guy is like. Gio Urshela is at the plate trying to get something going here. Okay, this guy's got that running fastball, and he just hit me with it, and it was gross. That ball is hit to right field, though. We're going to send the rudder home. We're going to score two runs here. Gio Urshela gets the fireworks started in the clean powder blue city connects. And we are up 2 nothing here in the second inning. That ball's hit pretty well by Arias. First pitch of the at bat. It will be caught, but we're going to send the runner home. And that will clear the loaded bases that we came in with. It's 3 0 Milwaukee. Joey Ortiz scores, and William Contreras coming to the plate with two outs. Whoa, that ball is crushed by Contreras. Go ball! Go ball! And it's gone! William Contreras takes the hanging curveball to dead center field, 393 feet from home plate. And that is going to put us up 5-0. I don't know who this pitcher is, but he needs to go back to AAA. And that ball will be caught by the shortstop. And that'll end our nice little run. Christian Yelich can't keep it going with two outs. But hey, 5-0 Milwaukee at the end of two. That's what we like to see. All right, a lot of action since we were last in the game. We're up 8-3 here, so the game pretty well in hand. Nelson Velasquez, though, has a 10-game hitting streak, and he's 0 for 3, so we're going to try and keep it alive here. Oh, no, first pitch of the at-bat. That cutter up in the zone really gives us trouble. That's going to be a pop-out by Velasquez. That might be the last action we get this game. I lied. Nelson Velasquez gets another at bat here in the eighth. We're up 10 3. He's 0 for 4 on the game. Jerson Moreno is pitching. And that ball is hit pretty well, but an early swing will make him 0 for 4. And that's going to end a 10 game hit streak. Sorry, buddy. That will do it, though. We take game one against the Athletics. Hopefully, we can get a nice little sweep to get our momentum back. They are god awful so we really really need to take advantage of that all right we have rattled off five straight wins including sweeping the a's and taking the first two games of our mariner series this is the series finale we're going for our second sweep in a row and some momentum heading into a big series against the cubs coming up we are firmly back in the wild card race but we're down 2-1 here in the top of the fourth with one out runners on first and second Joey Ortiz at the plate against Logan Gilbert. That ball's hit decently to right field. Unfortunately, the right fielder will settle under it. We will get the runner over to third, though. Gio Urshela might have an opportunity to swipe second with Jackson Churio here. And it's two outs, but we do get the top of the lineup back up. It's Sal Fralick here. Oh, no. We got a decent lead, and we tried to steal second there, but Cal Raleigh really got us. He threw a high fastball, and yikes, bro. That's really unfortunate. Wow, and we do not get an opportunity to get back into the game. We end up losing this one 7-5 to five to Seattle. Hard to believe there wasn't any opportunity for us to get back in there. Unfortunate that our win streak ends at 5. All right, series finale against the Cubs here. A big four-game series in the NL Central. We've taken one of three. So this is to split the series here. It's tied at zero. Uh, bottom of the fourth, one out. Bases loaded. Mike Clevenger pitching to Akil Badu. Oh, my gosh. How did we whiff on that cutter, bro? I don't, I don't feel good about that at all. They say we were too early. Man. Ahmed Rosario at the plate now. Starting in right field today for an injured Nelson Velazquez who just has a nagging injury. He's out for a couple of days. That ball is hit well, but it's going to be fielded at third by Christopher Morrell. He flicks it over to Horner at second, and that will be 
out number three. We are unable to capitalize on the loaded bases. And we really should have capitalized on those loaded bases because we never got another opportunity to make something happen. We gave up five runs in the fifth and never found ourselves back in it. Jacob Mizorowski takes the loss. Five earned runs and four and a third. He was doing well until then. Mike Clevenger pitches a complete game shutout. That is demoralizing. All right, next to last series of the month here. It's game two of a three-game set against the Cardinals. We took game one, and we are tied at one here. At the bottom of the third, we've already put up one run this inning. One out, bases loaded again. This time, Alex Bregman at the plate. Ian Seymour is on the bump. Uh, hopefully, we can not squander this opportunity like we did last time. Oh, my gosh. Couldn't even... Get just a tip there, bro. Just a tip. Oh, strike three on Bregman. Now William Contreras at the plate. Please don't let me down. Don't let me fall. Let's just scrub that out of the final video. How about it? All right, bottom six here. We're going to get another opportunity, but this time we are down 2-1. Ian Seymour still on the bump, and Alex Bregman... Back up on the bump with Luis Arias on first. Not very much speed, but we're going to have to try and drive something into the gap here. That is not into the gap. It is directly to the center fielder who, I don't know, is that Tommy Edmond? It doesn't matter. It is. That ball's going to be lined up the middle. Way to sit back and wait on that changeup, Willie. And an 0-2 changeup is hit up the middle for a single. And now we've got runners on first and second with one out. Now Sal Fralick at the plate. All right, actually what we're going to do here is we're going to pinch hit for Sal Fralick. It's still a lefty-lefty matchup, but Akil Badu, not only does he have 86 clutch, which is better than Sal Fralick's, but he also has the pinch hitter quirk. So that's why I love bringing him off the bench. Let's see if we can make something happen. That ball is going to be hit, and it gets past the shortstop. We're going to send Arias home. He does not have wheels, but he just rickets on down to home plate, and he will score. This ball game is tied at two. Here's another look. Badu just goes the other way with it, and it barely gets past the shortstop. Mason win, and Badu. Comes in and pinch hits. He's hitting like 330 with runners in scoring position. It's pretty insane. And that is going to end the day for the Cardinals pitcher. That one's going to be grounded up the middle. They're going to get the play at first. Rosario beats out the throw. Or excuse me. They get the play at second. Rosario is able to beat out the throw at first. So the inning does continue with Gio Urshela here at third, or our third baseman, at the plate, swinging and missing. I'm losing my words here. It's almost dinner time, and your boy is hungry. That ball is going to be hit, and this time Mason Wynn able to settle under it. We're a little ahead of that slider and pulled it a little too much, but we are able to tie the game. It's unfortunate that the game is tied. We've out hit them by three, but we've got two errors. All right, bottom seven here. No outs. The game is in our hands. Still tied 2-2. We've got runners on first and second. Christian Yelich at the plate and Emilio Pagan in, in relief. That one's hit. We're a little behind it. But it is going to drop in the left field. It'll be a single. We hold the runner at third. And now the bases are loaded. No outs. And up comes Luis Arias. That ball is hit up the middle by Arias. The play will be made by Edmund. We're going to send the runner. Uh-oh. Oh, no. They're going to say Trio is out. He didn't even slide back in. Okay, we did score the run there. I ended up in a pickle. I told y'all, man, it's almost dinner time. No, oh, he gets us with the cutter. My goodness. So some squandered potential there, but we do take the lead. It's 3-2 at the end of seven. 
All right, we're hopping in here, top of the eighth. No outs, runners on second and third. Rysel Iglesias relieves Joel Pineapples, and we gotta get an out here. We're still up 3-2. Oh, that one's gonna be chopped to right. And they're gonna send the runner here. We got him at home. Nice throw by Akil Badu. Francisco Mejia applies the tag. Contreras out at the plate. And that's really going to save us from a bases loaded, no out situation. Now runners on first and second, one out is much more manageable. Davis Schneider at the plate. And that ball's going to be chopped to right. This one will land fair. And this game is going to be tied. They're going to send the runner home again. And we get him out again. This time they try to send Arenado all the way from first to home. And the relay throw is there. Akil Badu hits Alex Bregman, who gets it all the way down to Contreras, who makes the tag. No, I'm sorry. That was Luis Arias. And beautifully done. And we do give up the lead. It is tied. But we, we don't allow them to get the lead. It's 3-3 here with two outs. That ball is going to be skied to left field. Yelich will settle under it. And we're going to head to the bottom of the eighth here, tied at three. All right, bottom eight, no outs. We did get a runner on William Contreras. So Akil Badu is coming to the plate with a chance to be clutch again for us. That ball is... Swung on well, but hit directly to the second baseman. That's going to be a double play. 4-6-3. Gavin Lux for the Cardinals. Wow. Now Ahmed Rosario coming up with two outs. What? Wow. That is a horrible call for strike two. Oh, my goodness. Headed to the ninth. All right, nothing doing for St. Louis in the top of the ninth. Bottom nine here, no outs. Gio Urshela able to get on base. Andrew Moore still in the game. Francisco Mejia looking to make something happen, maybe, hopefully. 2-2 Two -two count here to Mejia. It's been a battle. The only thing we don't want to do here is hit into a double play, please. That was probably second on the list. All right, Jackson Churio, let's make some magic. Churio has been struggling a little bit since returning from injury. He was hot headed into his injury. And then he did go on a 10 game hit streak, but he's gone a little cold since then. Still, he batted at like 218 last year. So definitely an improvement this year. That ball is thrown and gets past the catcher. Urshela will advance to second. Uh, it's supposed to be a rest day for Joey Ortiz, but I think we're going to go ahead and put him in because I want, I want to be able to score. He's, he's our fastest runner with Ahmed Rosario starting. I want to be able to score if we get a hit in the gap here. Come on. Every win counts here. That ball's hit to right. Unfortunately, way too high. It's going to be fielded and right. We are going to try and take third base here. And we are able to. So, you know, that's why we put the pitch runner in. Unfortunately, that does get us to two outs. And Christian Yelich is going to come to the plate to face Giovanni Gallegos with the game on the line. That ball hit to left field by Yelich. Unfortunately, he gets way too far under it. No pop whatsoever. Even though we had the good timing on the high fastball, we're going to extra innings, man. All right, top 10 here, one out. Tommy Edmond on second base. Wilson Contreras at the dish. Rysel Iglesias has thrown two and a third innings. His arm's probably about to fall off. We might need to make a pitching change. Actually, his energy is looking pretty good for 17 pitches, so we're gonna leave him in. I thought about walking Contreras here. But I think we're just gonna go for uh, go for two outs the old-fashioned way. Hopefully. Oh, that ball is hit to right center. J 
Jackson Churio tracking it down, unable to make the play, and that is going to give the Cardinals the lead. We're looking for the play at third here, and that is a triple from Wilson Contreras, his first of the season. Uh-oh. There's a ground ball from Arenado. We struck out Goldschmidt, and we are able to get out of this one with only limited damage done. But we are down 4-3. We got to make something happen here. That ball is hit pretty well up in the zone. Unfortunately, Luis Arias has no power whatsoever. I mean, that's about as good of a hit as we can look for that ain't a perfect perfect. Golly, what a great at bat. A seven pitch at bat there. And now Alex Bregman comes up with one out. Oh, we get kind of on top of that slider. Bregman has no speed or else that might have had a shot. We're down to our final out here. And that's ball four. We will take first base here and keep hope alive. Hey, Akil Badu is one swing away from walking this thing off. That's going to be strike three, and that'll be the ball game. I want the record to show. I know I do timing hitting for a reason, but I want the record to show that he threw a high fastball that I had good timing with that was fouled off, and then a curveball right down the middle with good timing that was also fouled off, and then I took that horrible swing on that slider. So we lose 4-3 to the Cardinals. Very unfortunate. All right, we took the first two of three against the White Sox. This is the final game of August. It's August 31st. We are tied at two here. Bottom of the seventh, one out. Andrew Vaughn and Yohan Moncada on first and second. Eric Lauer in the game in relief against Max Stassi. This lineup looks horrid. We've got to get this sweep. There we go. There's a pop-up. Max Stassi, that's going to be an out on the infield fly. And we're one out away from getting out of this thing. Full count here for Lauer. Dominic Fletcher on deck. We do not want to load the bases here. I mean, we're going to try and hit him with this front door cutter. See if we can freeze him, maybe. That'll do it. Yes, sir. boy, Eric Lauer. All right, hopping in here in the bottom of the eighth with no outs. Rysel Iglesias in to try and get the hold. We do have the lead off the back of a Gio Urshela solo home run. That ball is grounded by Eloy Jimenez to Luis Arias, and it is 1-2-3 for Rizal Iglesias. We're going to take a 3-2 lead into the ninth here. All right, we got a little cushion in the ninth with a two-RBI double by Jackson Churio. Abner Uribe, though, running into a little bit of difficulty here. He's in trying to close this one out and get the save. We're up 5-2, runners on first and second. Yoan Mankata at the plate. That ball hit by Mankata to left center field it'll be fielded easily by christian yelich we get the ball in in plenty of time and now one out away from taking this sweep and finishing august with a bang that ball is going to be driven to left center field it's going to score two this is going to be a one run game five four milwaukee max stassi comes in huge for the White Sox here and now Jacob Gonzalez at the plate with the chance to make some magic that ball gonna be grounded to the center of the field and Luis Arias fields it and we are out of this thing with a 5-4 victory Ooh, that was a close one what a great way to end the month of August 5-4 the Brewers sweep the White Sox and we are firmly in this wild card race all right, as we move into September, we got to call two people up, expand our roster from 26 to 28. I'm going to call up one pitcher and one fielder. We're going to call up Scotty Morgan, who I believe was just an undrafted free agent rookie who we signed, 23 years old out of Tennessee, 69 overall with D potential. You can see he's kind of gone up and down depending on the attributes this year. But look at his AAA stats. 41.2 innings pitch, 0.86 ERA, 21 strikeouts, 11 walks, 1.06 width. So he's a lefty as well. We're going to go ahead and call him up. It's 
far as hitters go, I think what we're going to do is go ahead and call up Jefferson Caro. He was struggling a little bit offensively in AAA, so we sent him down to AA just to get his momentum back and make sure that he was still growing and thriving. Uh, but he's already on our 40-man roster, and so calling, calling him up to MLB will just kind of give him a chance to get a little exposure to the league. But also, it'll give us the flexibility when we run that left-handed lineup where Cisco Mejia is a catcher and William Contreras is a DH. We'll have another catcher so we can put in pinch runners, etc., cetera, uh, pinch hitters if needed. So it just kind of gives us a little bit more flexibility on our roster. All right, as we enter the final month of the regular season, the National League Central does seem kind of out of reach here. We're eight and a half games back on the Cubs. They're 82 and 57. But... The wild card race. We are locked, deadlocked, with the Diamondbacks in that third wild card spot right now. We both have a three-game cushion on the Padres, so that's nice. But we've got to pull ahead of the Diamondbacks and make the playoffs this year. Last year we won 79 games, so if we can win just eight games this month, it's an improvement over last year. Really, really want to make the playoffs this year. And, of course, the playoff race, not the only race going on. There are the award races. We've got Aaron Judge leading for MVP in the American League. Kyle Bradish leading for MVP, or excuse me, Cy Young in the American League. Rutschman for the batting title. Clay Holmes for uh, reliever of the year. And Yeri Rodriguez for rookie of the year. Jackson Holiday somehow still a rookie right behind him. And for the National League, Joey Gallo leading the MVP race already at 39 home runs. Just two away from his career high that he hit back in his peak with the Rangers. But my guy is also hitting 258, which is his highest batting average since 2019. Honestly, his highest batting average ever. A slugging 558, 908 OPS. Just a breakout year for Joey Gallo here. And then for Cy Young, Yoshinobu Yamamoto in his second year with the Dodgers. Tyler Glass now right behind him. Batting title, Ronald Acuna Jr. leading for that. Evan Phillips for reliever of the year. And then rookie of the year, Eddie Polanco, who was drafted by the Mets just last year, is batting 310, 17 home runs. All right, back into gameplay. First game of the month, it is against the Cardinals. First game of a three-game set against St. Louis. We are tied at two. Bottom of the fourth, one out. Jose Siri at the plate for the Cardinals. Aaron Ashby on the bump. Runners on first and second. That one going to be popped up to Arias. Exactly what we want. There's an infield fly out number two. That ball going to be grounded to Arias. He makes the play, and we are out of this jam. Nicely done by Aaron Ashby. It's going to be 2-2 at the end of four. All right, a lot has happened since it was 2-2 in the fourth. It is now 9-7. We've got the lead here in the ninth, but we've given up three runs in the ninth. Hobie Milner is in to face Nolan Arenado. I guess Abner Uribe might have blown this. I don't know. I don't know why our closer is not in. We're going to have to take a look at the game log, but Luis Robert is on second, and we've got to get out of this jam and get this win. Okay, once again, I do not know why our manager refuses to go to our closer. But Hobie Milner has been put in. He hasn't given up any hits. Uh, we've got to face at least three batters with him before we put a closer in. So he's going to get a chance at this save here. That ball is going to be grounded up the middle. And Ahmed Rosario can't field it. No. Oh, boy. They're gonna call that a base hit, but that was a double play. What? That's an error. That ball gonna be grounded to Urshela. We can't make the play. We're gonna get the out at first, and now it is 9-8. Oh my gosh. Oh, we walked Paul Goldschmidt. They pinch it, Ty France. And he gets an infield single. Now, the reason that Abner Uribe is not in is because he's at, like, half stamina. So, here comes Rizel Iglesias to try and finish this thing out. There's a ground ball. One pitch from Iglesias. 
and that's gonna do it. Hey, we will take it, baby. Brewers win 9-8, and hopefully we are on our way to the playoffs now. All right, after that big win against St. Louis to start the month, we have lost three straight, including two to St. Louis and our first game against Philadelphia. Here, it's bottom four. Zach Wheeler's on the bump, tied at zero. We got runners on first and second with Jackson Churio at the plate. That one's going to be hit really well, but it goes directly to the first baseman, Bryce Harper. Gah! Need a little bit more height under that, man. Now two outs, and Joey Ortiz comes to the plate. That one's hit well by Ortiz. It's going to get Castellanos kind of choked up and right. We send the runner home, and Jake Bowers scores from second. That's going to be an RBI single from Joey Ortiz with two outs, and we're going to take the lead here against Philadelphia in the fourth. All right, 3 1 pitch upcoming from Wheeler to Yelich. Looking for something to drive. Oh, man. He gets on top of it, bro. We had a nice swing on that, but it's going to be a ground out from Yelich. But hey, we take the lead 1 0 here at the end of fourth. All right, top eight here, Freddie Peralta still in the game. It's still 1-0 Milwaukee. Uh, looking to complete a complete game shutout with Peralta and get this win. 1-2 pitch and Captain Caveman, Brandon Marsh, able to ground this pitch up the middle. All-star starter for Philadelphia this year. And he's going to be on first with two outs and Trey Turner coming to the plate. Here we go with the three two that one's gonna be grounded up the middle by trey turner and we are going to face kyle schwarber with runners on first and second that ball is hit really well by schwarber but jackson churio will be there a little bit shy of the warning track and we are headed to the ninth inning with a one nothing lead all right here we go here we go abner uribe in for the save opportunity one nothing Bryce Harper leading things off. Let's get it. That ball's going to be grounded, and Joey Ortiz unable to make the play. JT Realmuto is going to keep this game alive for Philly. And now Alec Bohm up at the plate. They're going to try and steal with Realmuto, and we've got him. William Contreras has got it, and that is the ball game. Milwaukee wins this one 1-0, keeping our playoff hopes alive. All right, the simulation has not been kind to us. We have won the two games that we've played in and lost every other game this month. But we are now a game and a half back in the wild card race. We got a big series against Atlanta here. Bottom of the third, one out. First game of the series, tied nothing, nothing. Nelson Velasquez, base is loaded. Oh my gosh. Bryce Elder, you're not that disgusting. All right, William Contreras here. Two outs after the Velasquez strikeout. That ball's hit pretty well by Velas or by Contreras. And it is going to land in front of Michael Harris. And we will score two runners here. William Contreras with a two-out single scores two runners. And we're going to take a 2 nothing lead here in the third. That ball's hit well by Bowers. It's going to find itself... Bear, and we are going to find ourselves with runners safely on the corners. We score another run. Well played by Acuna in right field. I thought we might get extra bases out of it, but that ball skirts the line. And we are up 3 0 now. Look at this ball. Man, just like two inches inside the foul line. The changeup gets Urshela there. And Elder is out of this one, but not before giving up three runs. It's 3 0 Milwaukee after three. Of course, this is the Atlanta Braves, and this is not going to be easy. It's now 3 2, top six. One out, Eric Lauer in in relief. Marcel Ozuna at the plate. That's going to be a ground ball to Fralick. We get it over to second. Urshela turns it, and on the first pitch, Eric Lauer is out of this. What a beautiful play! Freilich fields it down the third base line and quickly flips it over to second. And Urshela able to flip it 
for the double play, we're out of this thing. All right, one inning later in the seventh, we find ourselves with a runner on first, no outs. Eric Lauer's still in the game. Let's try and keep this lead. That's going to be a slider grounded to Freilich. And there's a double play. We're out of this again. Well, not completely out of it. But we got two outs. And we're out of the runner on base situation. There's a swing. And that's just hit weakly to William Contreras. He's going to get the out. And we're headed to the eighth with a 3-2 lead. All right, top eight here. We're hopping in with Orlando Arcia on first. Rysel Iglesias is in here to try and get the hold, but Ronald Acuna Jr. is at the plate. That one is grounded to Ortiz. It's going to be another double play for Atlanta, and we need one more out to get out of this inning. That's going to be a ground ball by Matt Olson. Ortiz makes the play, and we are out of the eighth. A great fielding showcase from the Brewers infield today as Ortiz makes the turning, jumping throw to get Olsen at first. Here we go, top nine save opportunity. Austin Riley is up first and Abner Uribe is in. There's a swing and a miss. Three pitches, three strikes for Austin Riley. And now Ozzy Albies comes to the plate. There's a swing by Albies. He'll send it to left center, but Yelich is easily under it. And we need one more out here to get this win. It'll be Marcel Ozuna, the big, scary power hitter and also dom domestic abuser. That one's going to be hit to center field, and we are going to get a win doing everything we can to keep our playoff hopes alive, stealing the first game of the series against Atlanta. It's a 2-1 victory. Okay, we took two out of three from Atlanta. This is a really, really big stretch right here for us. Uh, seven straight games against the Tigers and Pirates. No disrespect to the Tigers and Pirates, but not the best teams in the MLB, right? So we really need to pull off at least five wins here because I think we're like two games back in the wild card right now. All right, game two against Detroit right here. We won game one, I think nine to one. So a pretty decisive win. And a rare moment here. We're going to actually hop in with the lead. Up one nothing in the bottom of the first with two outs, but the bases are loaded. Jake Bowers with a chance against Reese Olsen to try and blow this game over. What a curveball, bro. Wow. Rightfully hyped up there. He gets out of that one, and we blew our opportunity there. It's one nothing after one, though. Time is a flat circle. Bottom of the fifth, one out here, and bases are loaded for Jake Bowers again. Alex Fado on the mound, and this time we're down 3-1. So we've given up three runs since we were last in the game. But we can definitely make something happen here. I think Bregman can probably score from second on a ball in the gap. And we can tie this game. So let's try and make it happen. Oh, and they're going to hit him in the thigh there. And that's going to automatically score a run. We'll take that. Jackson Churio, 0 for 5. Looking for a big moment here. Oh, man. Bro, I thought we had good timing on that circle change. But a swing and a miss from Jackson Churio. That's really disappointing. Very late? Bro, that felt good. I don't know, man. That ball hit pretty well by Joey Ortiz, but it's going to be too high in the air, and it's going to be out number three. Coming with the bases loaded and only get one run. I don't love that. Wow, Detroit went absolutely insane. We're going to end up losing this game 9-2. to two. There was We really had no chance of getting back in here. Edward Cabrera takes the loss. Really unfortunate there. All right, so we took two out of three from Detroit and took our first two from Pittsburgh. So we are up to 80 wins now, which is an improvement by one over our win total from last year. Unfortunately, the Diamondbacks, who were fighting for the last wildcard spot, have won 11 straight games, and they're at 84 wins. So we're three and a half games out of the wildcard right now. So every game counts 
And here we are, top first, two outs against Pittsburgh, and Paul Skeens is on the bump. Let's see if Jake Bowers, again, with the bases loaded, can make something happen. Uh, he throws a slider, and we put a swing on it, and it's popped up by Bowers. Okay, so after that anticlimactic bit, here we are, bottom five, one out. The game is still tied at zero. Brooks Lee at the plate. Kobe Mayo and Indy Rodriguez on the base pass. The Pirates are just farming fresh prospects. Uh, Aaron Ashby still on the bump. Let's see if we can get out of this. That's going to be grounded to Urshela. We'll flip it to Ortiz and over to Bregman. And that is the end of the fifth. Brooks Lee grounds into the double play, and this game's still tied at zero. All right, we're fighting for our lives over here. Bottom six now, one out. We got two runners on for the Pirates. Aaron Ashby still in the bump. Brian Reynolds at the plate. That ball's going to be grounded to Fralick. He gets it over to Urshela, and that's another double play. We are turning double plays like crazy this video. All right, little offensive action here. Top seven, one out. Runners on the corners for Sal Fralick against Johan Oviedo. That ball's hit pretty well by Fralick. It is going to be called, it looks like, but we will easily get the run home, and we're going to take a 1-0 lead here with two outs in the seventh. That ball is hit really well by Akil Badu. We're going to send Joey Ortiz over to third, and that is going to be a two-out single from Badu. And now Alex Bregman coming up with a chance to extend our lead. Akil Badu is going to be in there with the stolen base. We took off with two strikes. Ball was a little bit low, and we are able to get to second here. So now second and third, we got a 2-2 count for Alex Bregman. If we can put a ball in the gap, it's going to make it a 3-0 game. And we are going to take a questionable... Ball four right there. That ball was on the corner, but it is called ball four. And now the bases are loaded for Nelson Velazquez. Looking to make something happen here, boys. Let's go. Oh my God. I think because I play on strike zone and so zoomed in and ranked, those high fastballs really get me. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just making excuses. Mm. Unfortunately, it is only one nothing, mid seven. All right, bottom seven here, Tyler O'Neill up. We faced him earlier this season in a similar situation and he went dong on us. It's gonna be interesting. Aaron Ashby still in the game. Uh, there is a base open at first and no outs. Ashby's only thrown 62 pitches here in the seventh, which is pretty in insane. I think what we're going to do is pitch to him because he's got very low clutch rating. So let's get it. Yeah, they're going to say he went on the 12-6 curve. And that'll be the fourth strike out of the game for Aaron Ashby. Kobe Mayo coming up to the plate now with one out. Runner on second still. Dak Sawinski does have speed at second. Oh, that ball is crushed. No. No. Kobe Mayo! This was not the outcome I was expecting when we came in right here. We're down 2-1. Bro. Not the pirate sword, bro. Unbelievable. And that's gonna do it. Jared Triolo gets caught up swinging. And we're out of this one, but not before... Kobe Mayo did his best to end our playoff hopes by sending a pitch over the right field fence. And here we are. Joey Ortiz is up. Top of the ninth. Colin Holderman in to try and close it out. And we are going to pinch hit here. Uh, Christian Yelich for Joey Ortiz. I'm like Pedro Serrano from the movie Major League. Just can't hit the curveball, bro. That ball is grounded by Fralick on the first pitch to Jared Triolo. It's short. Or actually, it might be Brooks Lee. I don't know. 
Either way, that's Brooks Lee. Either way, we're down to our last out. And Akil Badu is four for four today. That ball's hit well by Badu. Get over his head. Yes, sir. We learned how to hit the curveball. It is a two out double by Akil Badu. And we have life with Alex Bregman coming to the plate. Oh, we held up. Woo! We still have life. Nelson Velasquez, 0 for 4 today. He's due, baby. That's a that's a terrible loss. All right, so after losing that Pittsburgh series, all hope seemed lost. We're fighting, though. We've won our first two games in this series against the Cubs. We're going for a sweep here, but we're down one nothing uh, against against Jameson. How do you say his name? Taylon? Tayon? I don't know. I ain't cultured. Nelson Velazquez at the plate. We're four games back of the wild card. I, it, if we lose even a single game, I feel like that ends it. Oh, fist strike out of the game there. We're losing hope. We're losing momentum. We're losing games. That ball's hit well by Fraley, but it's going to be fielded by the Cubs infield, and they turn two there. Oh, my gosh. Top nine now, no outs. It's still one nothing, and we've got Luis Arias leading it off. Jameson Talon. Trying to get a complete game shutout on us. No way, dude. There is no way he pops that up like that. I'm sick. Oh, no, dude. Out number two. That ball's hit well by Yelich. It's a fastball down the middle. Oh, come on, dude. Dude, why does that ball die before the warning track? All right, still fighting for our lives here. Mathematically, still have a chance, even though we were like three and a half games back heading into this game against Cincinnati. We won game one, 12 to five. Edward Cabrera finds himself in a tough spot here. Two outs, bases loaded. Ellie De La Cruz is up, and we got a two-run lead. There we go. That ball's grounded to Arias, and he is able to make the play. We're going to maintain our two-run lead here. All right, another sticky situation for Cabrera. Whit Merrifield at the plate. Two runners on, two outs here in the top of the seventh. There's a swing and a miss on the slurve, and Edward Cabrera keeps the hope alive in Milwaukee. A couple of more RBIs from, our, from Joey Ortiz and Nelson Velazquez. Gave us a 4-0 lead, and we are going to win 4-0 here. Like I said, mathematically, we still have a chance to make the playoffs. And would you look at that? The Nashville Sounds, our AAA team, won the AAA championship. Carlton Parker was 2-4. for four. We called him up in the last month of the season. 2-4 for four with a home run. Wow. Two home runs. Wow. He had all the RBIs for us. Hmm. Future is bright. Future is bright. Well, good news and bad news. Good news is our double-A team, the Shuckers, Shuckum Shuckers, uh, has won their divisional series or whatever, and they're going to play in the championship series against the Tennessee Smokies. So we've got the triple-A champs. We're looking to have the double-A champs. Unfortunately, the bad news is, although we have won seven straight, the Diamondbacks and Braves have locked up the last two wildcard spots. And we have two games left in the season. We've improved seven wins overall this year, but we won't make the playoffs. All right, playing for pride and our 88th win of the season here. It is the final game of the season against my Boston Red Sox. Uh, we're up 5-3 here, bottom seven, two outs. Carlos Hernandez is in to try and get Tristan Casas out with runners on first and second. There it is, strike number three, looking at the knees on Tristan Casas and Carlos Hernandez is hype. Bottom eight here, no outs. We got a runner on first, the former Brewer, Willie Adamas, and Vaughn Grissom at the plate. Carlos Hernandez still on the bump. 
That ball's gonna be grounded to Ortiz. He has to charge, and we'll get the out at second, but no out at first. It's gonna be one down here in the eighth. That ball's grounded to Ortiz. He has to dive to stop it, and we're not gonna be able to make the play. Now runners on first and second. There it is, the high fastball. Peyton Burdick strikes out. And now Carlos Hernandez, one out away from getting out of this situation. He just whiffed completely there. Kyle Teal at the plate. Last year's first round pick for the Red Sox. The catcher out of Oregon State, maybe? There it is! We buckle him at the knees. And he strikes out looking. Carlos Hernandez absolutely clutch this game we're gonna take a two-run lead into the ninth and no need for us to hop in it is a brewers victory in the final game of 2025 what a season man we improve our win total by nine this season we end it with a sweep of the red Sox. we end up with 88 wins our new closer abner uribe ends up with 20 saves but we missed the playoffs by like two or three games. Unfortunate. All right, here you get a look at the playoff bracket. Minnesota and Texas on the left side. The Dodgers and the Mets on the right side all getting buys. And then for the National League, you've got Philly, Arizona, Chicago, and Atlanta. For the American League, you've got Los Angeles, Houston, Baltimore, and New York. It is prediction time. I want y'all to stop and think. Go down to the comments below and let me know what you think. I'm going to go Astros over Angels. I will go Orioles over Yankees. We'll go Astros over Twins. Orioles over Rangers. And Orioles over Astros to go to the World Series. And then for the National League, I'm going to take Philly over Arizona. Atlanta over Chicago. New York over Atlanta. Los Angeles over Philly, Los Angeles over New York, and then I'm going to take Baltimore over Los Angeles in the World Series. Let's see what happens. Hey, the Shuckers won the Southern League Championship Series. So we've got the champs in AA and AAA. All right, so my predictions were way off. I had Baltimore winning it all, and they went out in the wild card round. We've got a Minnesota-Chicago World Series. Crazy stuff. And I'm going to try and redeem myself here. I'm going to say Twins in six because we hate the Cubbies in Milwaukee. And the Cubs win the World Series in five games. Wow. A lot of uh, pressure here as the second place team in the NL Central. I mean, I, I feel kind of absolved from struggling against the Cubs all year. But man... Wow. All right, season recap time. First up, it's going to be our guys. The hitters first. Christian Yelich finishes batting 286. His highest batting average, well, except for last year, he batted 312. But in real life, that's a higher batting average than he's had since 2019 when he batted 329. He also finishes with 19 home runs, which is really, really great. Uh, just really, just the, the guy in Milwaukee. He's our franchise guy. We've got him under contract for four more seasons. So he's not going anywhere. We do see a little bit of regression in him, uh, stats-wise, because he is 33 years old. But his performance is, is keeping him up, and it's going to keep him relevant. William Contreras, the best catcher in baseball. We've got him extended through the same year as Christian Yelich. So if we choose, we can have them both on our team through 2029. Um, Jefferson Caro, though, is developing well. Definitely not calling him up next year full-time because William Contreras is still great, and Caro's not quite there yet hitting-wise. But uh, William Contreras, our catcher for the foreseeable future, at least a couple more seasons, I would say. Batted 284 this year, which is way down from 345 last year. Uh, 20 home runs, pretty, pretty good. Uh, he's 27, so you see his stats regress a little bit. But that's really because his, his stats were based off of a 345 season where he won the batting title. Super Sal Freilich, his first year as a third baseman. You see his potential actually went down, which is disappointing. Uh, he batted 274, only six home runs. 
he is doing okay. I mean, he's, he's looking pretty good at the very least. I mean, maybe he settles in as a role player throughout his career. Maybe he doesn't start forever. But, I mean, he's, he's good, and he's been good for us, and he can play pretty much everywhere. Uh, Nelson Velazquez finishes with 30 home runs, which it looked like he was going to not do that well, but he, he had a strong second half. Still a little bit disappointing, and Joey Ortiz ends up batting 235, which is a little bit better than it was looking like. Still not very good uh, hitting-wise. Luis Arias bats 301. Very, very strong there. Ahmed Rosario finishes 249. His contract is expiring. I'm not really sure what we're going to do there. Francisco Mejia, uh, we extended him a couple more seasons. We're going to keep him around because he's just great to have. Uh, Gio Urshela had a good year for us. I could probably see us moving on from him. Although, I don't know. I mean, he's still not regressing hitting against lefties. He batted 276. Jackson Trurio had a rough end of the season, honestly. He was batting up near 300 for a while. Ends up batting 229. 620 OPS is an improvement over last year. You can see his contact versus right actually ends up going down, but a lot of improvement in the vision, discipline, and clutch area. Uh, really hoping that he breaks out next year. I think next year is the season. He ends up batting, you know, 260, 270, really establishing himself. Akil Badu, only 116 at bats this season, but batted 310 and slugged 457. Really improving. I mean, he's 26. He might, I mean, here's the thing. He's got that pinch hitter quirk, and he's got 85 clutch, which is a lot higher than his contact. So he's a perfect bench bat, but he's almost playing himself into a position where I might want to try and start him. Jake Bowers also career year, batted 294, slugged 534, 23 home runs, 10 higher than his career high. So really huge improvement from Jake Bowers. Love to see that. Kind of up and down on Alex Bregman here. Um, gained a lot of, of hitting against lefties, which is good. We're starting to see a little bit of natural regression for him, though. A 288 average. 28 home runs is actually uh, not a career high for him, but the most he's hit since 2019, which is pretty insane to think. All right, for pitchers, Freddy Peralta regressed statistically. Uh, 326 ERA, 127 whip. Uh, but you can see, you know, he's still improving as a pitcher. Maybe next year is the Cy Young year. Aaron Ashby, uh, 608 ERA, 167 whip is horrible. I cannot believe his stats are going up at all. Uh, Edward Cabrera, really improving his control. His walks per nine going up. 142 whip is a huge improvement over life. And his 864 ERA. Uh, Nick Pavetta did okay this year. 452 ERA, 141 whip, 10 and 9. Jacob Mizorowski, how did he do? I mean, he's definitely improving. He ends up with a 54 ERA and 6 and 4 and a 1 8 whip. So, not the best. Uh, he's probably going to be fighting for a roster spot next year with AJ Smith Schauber. Abner Uribe ends up with a 2 2 7 ERA and 20 saves. Really, really awesome to see. Genesis Cabrera comes in and does okay for us. Isel Iglesias did pretty well, but I mean, he's 35 and he's, he's done pretty much. He's, he's pretty cooked. He's going to be probably a 65 by the time next season ends. Probably the same for Hobie Milner, but that's okay because we have old uh, Scotty Morgan. I, why did Scotty Morgan get sent down? We called Scotty Morgan up this year at the end of the year. And, um, well, he finished with a 491 ERA. At one point, he was doing really, really well. But he's kind of, uh, I'm worried that he's kind of capped out at where he's at because his potential is so low. But I think he could really be a decent role playing arm for us for a while. All right, running through the awards real quick. First for the American League, Aaron Judge wins MVP 56 home runs for the Yankees. Cy Young winner is Kyle Bradish for the Orioles, 20 and five this year with a 3.42 ERA. Batting title goes to Adley Rutschman, who hits 3.72. Absolutely nutty. Tim Mazo wins Reliever of the Year for the Blue Jays. Jackson Holiday wins Rookie of the Year for the Orioles. Hank Aaron Award, of course, goes to Adley Rutschman, 3.72. Wow. All right, Gold Gloves, really quickly. Tanner Bibby, Alejandro Kirk, Ryan Mountcastle. 
Marcus Simeon, Michael Garcia, Obachet, Dalton Varto, Julio Rodriguez, and Max Kepler. Silver Sluggers, Jose Altuve, Adley Rutschman, Nathaniel Lowe, Jorge Polanco, or, uh, Jose Ramirez, Corey Seager, Aaron Judge, Juan Soto, and Mike Trout. All right, for the National League, I don't think that we won any awards, but Matt Olson wins MVP. at 305 with 45 home runs for the Braves. Cy Young goes to Yoshinobu Yamamoto in his second year in America, playing for the Dodgers 18-7, 201 strikeouts. Batting title goes to Trey Turner, who batted 324. Believer of the year goes to Evan Phillips in his 55 saves. Rookie of the year goes to Zach Veen for the Rockies. I really thought it was going to be Eddie Polanco. He was kind of leading it for a long time. The Mets drafted him last year. And then Tamar Johnson rounds that out. Hank Aaron award goes to Trey Turner. Now, really quickly, gold gloves. Sandy Alcantara, William Contreras wins a gold glove for the Brewers. Uh, Dominic Smith, Tyro Estrada, Ryan McMahon, Francisco Lindor, DJ Friedel, Johan Rojas, and Fernando Tatis Jr. Silver Sluggers, Jorge Soler for the Giants, William Contreras, let's go baby, three straight Silver Sluggers for my man, Matt Olson, three straight Silver Sluggers for him, Patel Marte, Austin Riley with his third straight Silver Slugger, Trey Turner, Dick Castellanos, Corbin Carroll, and Anthony Santander. Your American League postseason MVP for the Twins is Edward Julian, an Auburn boy, war dam, war dam. And then for the National League and the Cubs is Seiya Suzuki and your World Series MVP, batting 381 with three home runs and nine RBIs in the World Series, Seiya Suzuki. All right, y'all, that is going to wrap things up for season two of Brewers franchise. I was kind of hoping that we would make the playoffs and we get to do some playoff games this year. But you know what? You live and you learn, and now we get to offseason. So if you like the content, please like and subscribe. It really helps other people see it. And turn on those notifications so you know when the offseason video goes live. We will see you next time. As always, I really appreciate you. Peace out.